This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gildart, and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Grind, the show where I give you some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of the games we love. I've been playing a lot of Berserk and the Band of the Hawk on PC lately, mostly because it looks a touch better than on PS4, and because I'm insane and I want 100% of the trophies and achievements of every Musou game on every platform. But as I've been working through the story, I thought it would be a good idea to do a daily grind episode on how to get two of the most famous horses in Musou history. Red Hair and Matsukaze are so popular in Musou games that they may as well be characters themselves. Red Hair's first appearance was in the technical first entry in the Musou franchise, Dynasty Warriors 2. For those not aware, the reason why Dynasty Warriors 2 is the first in the franchise is because the first Dynasty Warriors was a one-on-one -on -one 3D fighting game titled Son Goku Musou, which released for the PS1 on February 28th, 1997 in Japan, June 27th in North America, and not until December of the following year for Europe. Since it's a fighting game, there really is no point in having mounts. <gasps> Unless you make Red Hair one of the fighters! I'm sorry, Koei, but you messed up real bad here. We would later get the true Musou experience we now know and love when Dynasty Warriors 2 came out for PS2 on August 3rd, 2000 in Japan, October 26th in North America, and November 24th in Europe titled Shin Son Goku Musou. Who knew a single Shin would be so important? Maybe that's why Western society is crumbling. I blame Razor Scooters. With Dynasty Warriors 2, you could only ride Red Hair if you start the stage off with Guan Yu or Lu Bu. The only other option is to go Grand Theft Auto on them. With Dynasty Warriors 3 and onward, we would have a way to unlock Red Hair for use by any character. Matsukaze, on the other hand, got his introduction with the very first Samurai Warriors, which originally released for PS2 on February 11th, 2004 in Japan, May 4th in North America, and June 25th in Europe. Matsukaze was unlockable from the very first Samurai Warriors game and is known as the trusty horse of Keiji Maeda. So with Matsukaze being the horse of my favorite Samurai Warriors character and red hair being my favorite color, I was so excited to find out that they were in Berserk and the Band of the Hawk, which is a Musou game based on the Berserk franchise. Now, I did do a full review of this game a couple of years ago during a Musou May, so you can check that video out in the iCard. But maybe I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself. Don't forget to give this video a like, comment with your thoughts below, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. All right, let's jump into things. Before we get into the meaty process of unlocking these two behemoths, I thought we should take a moment to get a better understanding of what we're aiming for. Red Hair and Matsukaze might be famous horses, but there doesn't seem to be any tie to Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. Are they really only here because the game was developed by Koei Tecmo and is a Musou style game? I set out to answer that question. The answer is yes. Red Hair definitely looks like he belongs in this series, especially during the Age of Darkness with his flowing fiery mane. Red Hair was known as one of the strongest and fastest horses, not just of his time, but in all of history. Of course, figures like Lu Bu and Guan Yu were known for riding him. They're like the Goku and Vegeta of their time, if Goku had a lot more facial hair and if Vegeta was a lot taller. It is said that Dong Zhuo gave red hair to Lu Bu for joining his forces. Lu Bu is probably the one that is most often depicted riding red hair. But after his death at Xia Pi, Cao Cao took the horse in and could not find an officer who was able to ride the horse. Apparently, he was a bit of a brat until Guan Yu waltzed in and was able to tame him. From here, Red Hair stayed by Guan Yu's side. Anytime you run into Guan Yu in a battle after Xia Pi, you can be guaranteed that he's sitting atop Red Hair. When Guan Yu died during the Battle of Fan Castle, Red Hair was given to Mahjong, but Red Hair wouldn't eat and eventually died. I mean, I understand what he was going through. Once you go Guan, you don't move on. Matsukaze, on the other hand, doesn't really have as grand of a tail behind him. One day, Keiji was having tea with his uncle Toshiie. As the conversation drew out, Keiji got the suspicion that Toshiie's tone and words were becoming more and more hostile towards him. Oh <sighs> no, is this where it's revealed that Toshiie is the racist uncle of the family? 
Due to this, Keiji kept a close eye on his uncle, and when he noticed his uncle shifting about, he offered to prepare a bath for his uncle, who agreed. Keiji then threw in the coldest water he could before telling Toshie that the bath was ready. While Toshie was preparing to jump into the bath, Keiji decided to run away from the Maeda clan. On his way out, he saw Matsukaze, the Maeda family prized horse. Of course, Keiji weighed his options, run away with a horse or run away without. So he stole Matsukaze, and as Toshie was running out of the cold bath, he could see Keiji riding off into the distance on Matsukaze. I like the overall story of Matsukaze better, but I have to admit, Red Hair's legacy is just a tough one to beat. Either way, I hope these stories helped you fall more in love with these horses. Confirmed, Lubu is a horse girl! Well, now that we got that history lesson out of the way, let's actually get into the meat of things and look at how to unlock these horses. Well, luckily, these are probably going to be the easiest things to unlock in any Daily Grind episode. You don't even need to finish the story. Hell, you don't even need to start the story. Hell, you don't even need to start the game. In fact, you're going to need to go to the store and... Joke's on you, this is actually an expanded episode. April Fool's, bitches! Yeah, you actually don't unlock Red Hair or Matsukaze through playing the game. They're not even technically in the game. They are a part of the additional Warhorse set, which can be bought for $7.79 Canadian on Steam or $9.49 on PlayStation. It comes with the Four Horsemen of Capitalism! This pack comes with Red Hair, Matsukaze, Berserker, and Unicorn, which can be used from the very start of the game. Honestly, charging this much is a bit on the pricey side, especially on PlayStation. I was personally thinking like $5, so Steam's price isn't too terrible. Plus, I know I've seen this go on sale half price periodically on Steam as well, so you can usually get it for under $5 if you have some patience. Oh, I went to school for business, not to become a doctor! Each of these horses' stats are pretty high, so it can be beneficial for those starting out. Red Hair has a max charge power of 999, endurance of 800, and max speed. He also has the abilities Centaur and Vitality Up. The first increases your abilities when mounted, while the second increases your max health. Red Hair's max speed makes it literally one of the fastest horses in the game. The charge power is also really nice if you like plowing through enemy ranks. Centaur is the perfect ability if you plan to stay on your horse for combat, and you can always use some extra health. That being said, Red Hair has the lowest endurance of all of the DLC horses, meaning it is easier for for enemies to knock you off. And if you're banking on staying on your horse and utilizing his centaur ability, you're going to run into more issues than with any other horse. Now, 800 endurance isn't too bad, but it could be better. I will also say that with Berserk's graphics engine, red hair looks a little bland. The flaming mane isn't as vibrant, and we don't get the particle effects that we've seen in other Dynasty Warriors games. Matsukaze, on the other hand, has a charge power of 800 with max endurance and speed. He also has the abilities Flare, which increases the power of your sub-weapons, and Dexterity, which shortens sub-weapon recharge time. Honestly, I think they got some stats and abilities mixed up here. Red Hair never had the best endurance in the Dynasty Warrior series. That title has been held by Shadowrunner. That's why you hear so much about mixing Ma Chao with Shadowrunner in the classic games. But Matsukaze makes sense as being the fastest and highest endurance. So why not give it Centaur? Now, unlike Red Hair, Matsukaze looks perfect in this engine. I love the way he looks. Next up on the chopping block is Berserker, who is the slowest of all the DLC horses with 800 speed and maxed out charge power and endurance. These stats make perfect sense for Berserker. He's completely clad in armor, so it makes sense that he would be the slowest of these horses. His abilities are Equian Resurgence, which refills your Frenzy Gauge while mounted, and Vitality Up. Yeah, I'm starting to think that the stats are perfectly fine and make enough sense, but the abilities are the ones that's mixed up. Centaur and Vitality Up should be Matsukaze's, as he's the toughest and fastest horse of this game, and Centaur would pair with that so perfectly. Equian Resurgence and Vitality Up would make the most sense for Red Hair. Even though Guan Yu rode Red Hair as well, he is most paired with Lu Bu. Lu Bu is the original Musou monster. If you are fighting him at Hulao Gate and you heard 
heard the Musou sound, you knew you were in trouble. Gradually refilling the frenzy gauge could be a reference to this nostalgic bit of shared trauma we all have. Meanwhile, Berserker is designed like Guts' Berserk armor. So being the slowest makes sense, but Guts in his Berserk armor has a bunch of sub-weapons, so it makes sense to have flair and dexterity. Well, we've got three out of four horses so far, and all I've got are complaints. I'm not looking forward to this last one. All right, moving on. Unicorn is the most balanced of all of the horses, with every stat being 900. Unicorn also looks good as well. I will say it would have been nice to see some particle effects to what red hair should have, but one thing needs to change. Rainbows! Unicorn has the abilities Luck Up, which increases your battle spoils and vitality up. Wait, this makes sense. How in the hell did they fuck up the others? Unicorn is not only the most practical horse as far as making sense, it's also probably the best horse to use from the start. With the Luck Up ability, you can get more gold to buy level ups and items. I honestly think I'll end up using Unicorn the most as I work through my Steam file of Berserk to bring it up to where my PlayStation file is. But there's one extra horse that throws a wrench into things. It really makes this weird for my final thoughts on this package, but yes, there is a fifth horse. Oh no! I ate the number five! Oh, it gets much worse. No! Yeah, the biggest thing about this revelation is that the fifth horse is only on Steam. Yeah, I bought this DLC pack to help me power through the Steam version, saw this fifth horse and went, oh man, I don't remember this one, and then proceeded to load up my PlayStation file to be greeted with nothing but a middle finger, and it even stole my lunch. I was looking forward to my cheese string. This fifth horse of capitalism is the Accursed War Horse, which that name may not ring a bell, but this face sure as hell will. This is the infamous horse that appears in chapter 124 of the manga that assaults Fernice. Yes, you can ride that horse. I'm kind of perplexed why they would include this horse as DLC and why they would make it only a part of the pack on Steam. And why would they make the Steam package cheaper than PlayStations? I thought we were going to end on a good note with Unicorn actually making sense and being good for early game grind, but no, I need to be more confused. On top of this, a cursed warhorse has all max stats and vitality up, no other abilities, just the best stats of any horse and an increase to your max health. But I have one question. Why is this the best horse in the game stats-wise? Like, I don't want the rape horse to have the best stats. Give him 950 across the board. That way it's still the best of the balanced horses, but you can get faster, stronger, or more defensive horses if you want. No wonder they never made Fernice a playable character, because Koei must have known people would go into battle with her riding this horse just for the memes. And this is probably only going to matter to those who know the history of Berserk and who have read or watched the scene, and maybe once you get to that part of the game you'll choose never to use that horse as well. In the end, this DLC pack doesn't really provide a whole lot in terms of substance, but it's really not that bad. I will say the Steam version is the one that's worth it. The PlayStation pack needs a half price sale to make it even okay. At least with Steam you get an extra horse for the memes, and you're paying less even at regular price than on PlayStation. If you're able to grab this for the half price on Steam, even better. I always use SteamDB to look at price histories, and this goes on sale every few months, so just keep an eye on it. Add it to your wish list so that you get a notification when it does go on sale. Like I said earlier, I'm probably going to use Unicorn throughout most of my playthrough of this game. I'll likely swap it out for Red Hair and Matsukaze every now and then just for nostalgia, and I might throw Guts on the Berserker once I hit that point in the story, and I may actually use the Accursed Horse at some point. Either way, I recommend getting this DLC albeit on sale, and maybe schedule some therapy if you're buying the Steam version. And I'm gonna need a hell of a lot of therapy after that. Anyways everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Daily Grind Expanded. Thank you for watching this April Fools video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also don't forget that Musome is coming soon and this year's theme is Fist of the North Star. What other DLC or grinding tips would you like to see? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to help support the channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join their names at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon or you can donate in a one-time fashion and join the volunteer unit over on Ka.
coffee. A special shout out to my guild general, Beggy Bag Bag, for supporting this channel at the top tier. There are other rewards in other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.